Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Keith H. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Last night at Tesla's Fremont factory in California, there were some pro-Palestine protesters that were causing some havoc around the factory grounds. And as a result, Tesla closed the facility to protect the workers. The demonstration, one of several in the Bay Area taking place today, others taking place nationwide. It was all part of a wider effort to disrupt the nation's global economy today, and that included, as you saw, blockades on bridges, roads used for that purpose. As for why Tesla in particular was uh, targeted, organizers pointing to Elon Musk's decision to invite Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to the plant last year. I this was most likely short-lived and just a temporary disruption. As far as we know, Fremont should be back open and operating today. Some more information about these layoffs at Tesla have been trickling out over the past 12 to 24 hours. Be careful careful with all of these as you have some frustrated employees, ex-employees, I'm sure. Sources are saying some departments are losing around 20% of their staff and they are not excluding high performers. These layoffs were largely due to poor financial performance. They noted many of those affected were working on projects that have fallen lower on Tesla's priority list. This one was interesting. It looks like Rohan Patel actually gave a comment to TechCrunch and he said he decided Sunday night to leave Tesla because of big overall changes at the company. Rohan declined to be specific, but he noted in a message, it would be better for me not to speculate. Tesla is going to be stronger than ever and change is good. Drew Baglino also decided to comment and confirmed what we speculated about yesterday. He said, I feel good about the impact I've been able to achieve. My leadership team is strong. The energy business I'm responsible for are doing well, etc. Hassan Nazar, who is also on Tesla's policy and business development team, had some really nice farewell words for Rohan saying no one can outwork him, understand every corner of the business better, or immediately take over a room like Rohan. The guy can grasp and process interdisciplinary concepts better than any engineer or scientist I've ever known. Rohan is fearless. He once told me his biggest weakness is he has never seen a pitch he doesn't want to swing at. Not to throw salt in our wounds here. I just think it's nice to see these Tesla leaders finally get some of the recognition that they really deserve. Lars, who is still at Tesla, also had some really nice words to share with Drew Baglino. I'm not going to read it, but it's on the screen, so pause if you haven't seen it. Elon liked this post from Chris Zhang. He said, I told you Elon has re-entered wartime CEO mode. This scene is familiar to the veterans of the Tesla community. Today, Elon decided to bet the entire company on RoboTaxi. I don't know if all in RoboTaxi is right or wrong. I don't have the answer. Naturally, the question becomes, was Elon liking the wartime CEO part of that comment or the betting the company on RoboTaxi part? This bet the company narrative gets thrown around a lot. And in all reality, of course, it's not true. Tesla has a strong fundamental business, even if robotaxis don't pan out on the timeline we're expecting. However, I do think it would be somewhat accurate to say this is a bet the valuation of the company type of move. That's because if Tesla can't solve for robotaxis in the next few years, and they're left with a re-rating of Tesla's valuation just on the current business lines, it's definitely not going to have a PE around 60 where it stands today. Looking at today's numbers, just focusing on the bottom for Wall Street's fiscal year 2024 EPS estimates, they're now down to $2.81 for the year, which puts Tesla's forward PE at 56. I hope this would go without saying, but never make financial decisions based on one metric alone. But if we take Wall Street's expectations for this year, given Tesla's stagnant growth right now, even if Tesla's forward PE were to drop to let's call it 40, that would be a Tesla stock price of $112. As always, I just want everybody to be prepared for the possibilities of what could happen here. If Elon doesn't go out of his way to calm Wall Street's fears and all of the uncertainty around Tesla right now, and there's some sort of delay or hiccup with the RoboTaxi rollout, a different type of valuation for Tesla, at least in the near term, the next six to 12 months could be right around the corner. Sawyer had pointed out that all inventory vehicles for Tesla, not just the Model Y, had those inventory discounts removed. The only ones that still have discounts are demo vehicles. Replying to that, Elon said, we are simplifying and streamlining the whole Tesla sales and delivery system. It has become complex and inefficient. I'm not exactly sure what this has to do with inventory discounts and or whether this change has more to do on the internal Tesla side or the external customer 
facing side, but in the next few days, we'll probably have some more info. There is plenty of chatter out there right now that Tesla might start to offer low interest rate financing, which would be a really nice offer, but for now, that's just speculation. Yesterday, I had mentioned that it looked like Tesla was not doing any sort of hiring freeze, but fast forward to today, and that may have changed. If you go to their careers page and search for just North America, there are currently only five job listings remaining. Zero in the Middle East, but there are are, however, tens if not hundreds for Asia Pacific and in Europe. This could definitely just be something that's temporary as Tesla and all of the staff globally adjust after these mass layoffs, so something to monitor in the weeks ahead. I would guess that some will eventually come back, but most likely not all given Tesla's renewed focus on certain departments. There are still a few jobs listed on the official Tesla account on X, but not too many. Replying to James Stevenson, Elon said, every half decade or so, Tesla has to do a complete organizational overhaul to reach the next level. That said, our executive tenure is unusually high at well over 10 years at Tesla. We can all speculate as much as we want from outside of the stadium, but over the next two years, we're going to find out if this is enough from Elon and Tesla to get them to the next level. I know not all of you agree with me here, but I want to be on the record right now as saying I think the answer to that that is going to be yes. With the Brazilian authorities in full-on censorship mode, Elon was quick to recommend a VPN. And in a second post about using VPNs, he was saying how easy they are to use. And while Elon's posts, as far as we know, are not sponsored by Surfshark, today's episode is. While things in America, arguably, are not as bad as things in Brazil yet, in my opinion, it's still wise to use a VPN like Surfshark. Clearly, even our government is very interested in abusing its power to spy on us by any means necessary, and when you layer in the level of nefarious actors online rising, it's questionable why you wouldn't use a VPN like Surfshark. Simply put, a VPN encrypts your online data and activity, giving you your online privacy back. It works at home, at your family's house, in the airport, or anywhere you're at, and Surfshark is one of the only VPNs to allow one account for use on unlimited devices. Surfshark also offers a bunch of other features like changing your IP address to look like it's coming from another country, unlocking new libraries of content, it can get you better deals on flights and hotels, the clean web feature will clean up those annoying websites with ads everywhere, and all of that and more costs less than a cup of coffee per month. So if you'd like to secure your privacy with Surfshark, you can enter my coupon code electrified for an extra three months free at surfshark.deals slash electrified linked below. Tesla's new spring software update is looking pretty exciting, but sadly it's going to be mostly for those with AMD based cars. So if you're out there still rocking an Intel based chip on a 2021 or prior vehicle, I'm sorry on this one. Model three and Ys with the AMD chip are are going to get this new immersive full screen vehicles control view when the vehicle is parked. It'll have bigger playback controls and quick access to recents, favorites, and up next in the media player. It'll also have expandable autopilot driving visualizations with a smaller map in the top right for trip guidance. Auto shift beta is coming to the Model S and X 2021 and later. This can now also shift between drive and reverse based on your surroundings in addition to shifting out of park. Audible is now available as a native media app and as an Audible user, that's great to hear. By the way, if you have any recommendations, drop them below. You'll be able to sync your Spotify queue across vehicles and devices and adjust the playback speed. Now, if you listen to Electrified on Spotify, that 2X option for my slow speaking self should be there. There's a new hands-free trunk option, but only for Model S and X 2021 and later and the upgraded Model 3. You just stand still behind your trunk with your phone key and then the trunk will open on its own. Maybe this feature is excluding the Model Y for now because it does not have ultra wide band support support, but that's just a guess. In select countries, you can now get a preview if there's a sentry mode event right on your phone. If sentry mode triggers the alarm state, you can press and hold on the notification to see a quick video clip. 
There's increased regenerative braking for SNX 2021 and later on the highway, and then rear passengers can now see current trip details, time, and temperature at the top of the rear touchscreen. No native YouTube music yet, and no auto shift for Model 3 and Y, like many were speculating. If you're not sure what hardware your Tesla has, just go to controls, and then software, and then additional vehicle information. In a recent drone flyover from Wuwa of the Shanghai export lot, there are some what we believe to be Model 3 ludicrous variants ready for export. There's about 40 of them ready to go, maybe headed to showroom, so I would expect an official announcement sometime in the next two to three weeks, if not sooner. The weekly Tesla China data came in at 6,230. If you wanted to compare that to week two of quarter one, that number was 7,400. I did adjust our little scoreboard right here. So in the blue, we have the quarter over quarter comparison, which right now through the first two weeks, we're down about 23.3%. The green still shows Tesla's best quarter to date for this metric, but that's not really in play in my opinion this quarter. And at the bottom in the light orange, we have the year over year comparison. So for the first two weeks of quarter two this year, we're currently down about 58.3% relative to last year. It's worth noting April 4 through 6 was the tomb sweeping holiday in China, so that could have impacted deliveries a bit. Jim Fan, NVIDIA's senior research manager, said humanoid robots will exceed the supply of iPhones in the next decade, gradually, then suddenly. Elon added, yeah. I'm not sure if Jim was talking about the annual supply or the cumulative number. All I do know is in 2023, Apple sold about 235 million iPhones. I'm genuinely curious about what you all think about this. Just say yes or no below if you think something like this is going to happen by 2034. This TikTok video went viral about the Cybertruck accelerator pedal or the cover that actually was sliding off and would then get stuck causing unintended acceleration. It seems like an easy fix, but the safety regulators have contacted Tesla about this issue. Some Cybertruck deliveries the next few days have been canceled or delayed, so it sounds like they need until about April 20th to get this problem fixed. In the spring software update, there are some new things for the Cybertruck as well, the first one being the much anticipated power share. The colorizer option is now there for the UI, so you can pick the color or see your Cybertruck in a new wrap. There's new horn and lock sounds, cabin overheat protection, and the turning circle is now improved by 1.6 feet. No word on autopilot or FSD, but it's pretty wild that the turning radius can be shrunk by 1.6 feet with just a software update. I'm guessing after the earnings call next Wednesday, there will be some headlines about Tesla's spiking inventory levels. As far as we can tell, they may jump from around 16 now to the high 20s, so figured it was worth showing everybody this chart. This green line is the EV days of supply from Cox Automotive, so this is for the US market. The industry average for EV days of supply is 114 days. The industry average for ICE vehicles is 74 days. So even if Tesla's days of supply goes into the 30s, which I don't think it will, it's still significantly below the industry averages. And what this chart does not factor in for a company like Tesla is that as Tesla grows with more showrooms, they need more inventory on hand and for customers to actually experience. I'm not necessarily predicting this, but I won't at all be surprised if that inventory number goes back down in quarter two for Tesla. They haven't done price cuts. They've actually had price hikes. They've removed those price cuts for the inventory vehicles. So really that means one of two things. Either Tesla has seen their margins go too low and they do actually now have a margin floor that they don't want to go below, or there's been a slight uptick in demand that we'll see in the numbers in quarter two. Jordan from The Limiting Factor shared a helpful chart from Battery Line that shows us all of the different automakers and battery makers and their 4680 plans. You'll probably have to screenshot and zoom in here, but it's interesting to see the game of follow the leader that Tesla has begun. Let's not forget the form factor isn't really the magic sauce here. It's actually what goes inside of the form factor. There are certainly benefits, but also some trade-offs with a larger form factor. But again, what we really should be focusing on are things like the tablet's design or dry battery electrode, 
all of the chemistry that's happening inside. It's not just 4680s though, there are three companies, EVE, BMW, and Goshen that are focusing on the 4695. I think one of the most important takeaways here though is that the main Tesla suppliers are all working on some variants of the 46XX cell. If I could ask Elon one question about batteries, it might be how much of Tesla's internal cell IP they're willing to share with their suppliers. Sawyer pointed out that best Buy and Tesla are still partnering together this time around for the Powerwall 3. On the Best Buy website, there's a dedicated page to the new Powerwall 3 with some videos and infographics and a link taking you direct to the Tesla site. Martin Brower, a logistics company, has come out of the woodwork saying they've been running a pilot with a Tesla Semi since earlier this year. And real quick, we have to give our resident Semi tracker, Heinrich Zane, some recognition here as he was weeks ahead of this one. We talked about his post back in March when he said Tesla was working with a new customer. So Heinrichs, if you see this, thank you for your efforts, keep it up. I'll have his X account linked below if you want to go give him a follow. Martin Brower Brower is among several companies in the US to use the Tesla Semi. They called Tesla a leader in the space and said the pilot used two Tesla Semis running routes to restaurants. They said, overall, our drivers had positive feedback on how the vehicle performs. The Tesla Semi rises above any other tractor with mobility, center seat configuration, and precise movement that allows the driver to navigate safely. The Tesla Semi experience has been impressive since day one. Our drivers had no problem learning the systems and maximizing the features that set these tractors apart. We've been able to push these tractors well beyond expectations and look forward to our electric future. Martin Brower will review the results of the pilot to consider implementing the Tesla semis into our West Coast fleet as California state regulations begin to push ZEVs starting in 2026. Dan Priestley, who works at Tesla on the Semi, said these demonstrations with the Semi have provided great product feedback on how to make the best Class 8 truck while also showing customers how it can fit in their operations. I know people out there are frustrated waiting for the Tesla Semi to enter volume production, but one, this testing phase is certainly necessary for Tesla to work out any kinks for these vehicles. And then two, you have to remember we need an entirely separate charging infrastructure for the Tesla Semi. There could always be other supply chain bottlenecks we don't know about, but for expectations going forward, I'm not expecting any type of volume production of the semi until 2025 at the earliest. It's already the middle of April and the foundations have not even been laid at the new Tesla semi site at Giga Nevada. After a nine week delay, Ford has resumed sending 2024 F-150 Lightnings to the dealers. Ford still has not given any information as to what the quality issue actually was. Sawyer shared this video of three GMC vehicles doing the crab walk side by side on the snow. I'm just gonna scroll down a touch here and go ahead and leave this up for a second or two. Boston Dynamics, the company that Hyundai bought back in 2021, announced it's retiring its famous hydraulic humanoid robot Atlas after debuting over 10 years ago. They shared this farewell video with footage of Atlas with some of the failures along the way, and while some parts were actually really funny, I found myself feeling somewhat sentimental, which was pretty weird because I wasn't really even an Atlas fan, I just knew what it was. I'm sure Boston Dynamics is retiring this to work on whatever they have next with the billions of dollars flowing into the humanoid space right now, probably something with more of a commercial focus if I had to guess. At least now, people won't be able to make the foolish comparison about how far behind Atlas Tesla is with Optimus. Rivian just dropped a pretty slick software update of their own where they're actually now grading different charging stations. It grades stations across the US and Canada and gives real-time reliability scores from A to F for different stations. Factors in things like network uptime, the number of successful charging sessions, and peak performance of the chargers. The scores are integrated into Rivian's trip planner and then your car will prioritize which stations have the highest scores when planning your route. They'll be grading not only the Rivian Adventure network, but the Tesla Supercharger network as well. Nissan said they expect to mass produce EVs with some next-gen batteries by early 2029. They're hoping to leap ahead with a new type of battery. They're expecting to start a pilot production line by March of 2025 with commercial production in 2028. Tesla 
stock closed the day at $157.11, down 2.71%, while the NASDAQ was down 0.12%. It was a normal volume day for Tesla, trading about 1 million shares above the average volume the past 30 days. One of the reasons I share this volume metric is so that over time we can see what type of news events actually bring a lot more activity into Tesla stock either way. You also may recall when I started sharing this metric, the average volume the past 30 days was about 109 million. So on a daily basis, we're now about 14 million shares lower. And if you just say an average of about $165 a share, that's $2.3 billion that was trading Tesla that's now effectively on the sideline. Again, just daily averages here, but the point is that there is some money that's waiting to see what's going to happen, whether it's the Q1 call or something else. You guys know I'm not one to hype up any quarterly call for Tesla, but I will say given all of the uncertainty right now, it would be a great time for Elon to actually lay out some plans and some expectations. I'm not at all personally expecting him to do that, but for Tesla stock in the short term, it would go a very long way. Don't forget Elon's nudging that VPNs are easy to use. Your Surfshark deal will be linked below. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.